Hey everyone, the name is Eric Doran. Real talk here. What personality type is most likely to elect a dictator? Now, the question here is actually wrong. It's the wrong focus. It's not that there is a type more open to authoritative and repressive regimes, but it is that most people are suffering. And people that are suffering, people that are struggling, people that are caught up in personas and masks and all these fake notions about themselves and who they have to be and what kind of society that you have to live in and what kind of a system that must exist are suspected, subjective to being manipulated. So who would vote for Hitler? What drives a dictator? Well, Carl Jung argued that most people out there don't actually know themselves fully. Most people are not individuated. And he argued that people that are not individuated for various reasons because of what they repress can't accurately describe what they want, what they need, what is important to them, and what makes them happy. They have, to some extent, ignored the question of happiness, of virtue, and of the, what the good life is, to instead focus on the question, what is the necessary life? And this question is subject to social bias, bias around who you have to be. You have to be strong, you have to be manly, you have to be authoritative, you have to be decisive and proactive. And uh, we're all stuck in it. We all get sucked up in it. I know that um, there have been many warnings throughout history. Uh, Nietzsche, for example, would argue that, well, there is a danger of herd mentality. Herd mentality. People who, I should say, only do what the herd does, who only follow the herd. And we often think of social justice warriors here, social justice warriors who scream for their universal ethic, their, their ideas of justice and what justice is. Uh, but herd mentality can come from, in my opinion, any direction. It's uh, not social justice warriors that are telling us about the new smartphones and the new clothes and what to wear and what's fashionable and what's good and what's the right way to do things. That's self-help books. Every library you go to, it's uh, advice on who to be and how to live. It's uh, all these people raising their own personal conduct of life as the superior one. And really, when we're looking at the dictators, when we're looking at these people who are so caught up in um, these ideas, they're just the executors of this justice. I don't think they have a power or a say in what happens. They are merely the vessel of the mainstream of the popular opinion of the popular culture. Hitler... I do not think acted out of self-awareness or out of insight or out of um, tunement to what he needed. It was not that he woke up every day and felt that my nature is to exterminate youth and to uh, preach for the Third Reich. No, I, he started out wanting to be a painter and we all know this and we're all shrugging it off and going like, what? So. Uh, um, but it's all to the point. I think he got caught up, absorbed by the collective unconscious expectations and the views. And I think that when everyone is trying to be, instead of heroes, virtuous, in tune with themselves, with who they are, what they love, everyone is trying to be one of the inferior archetypes. And when people are trying to be inferior archetypes, 
they're going into the lesser sides of their nature and they're to some extent giving into the weaker aspects of themselves and one of the core archetypes out there is of course the rival and the rival is an irrational archetype uh, because the rival is the side of you that wants to act against your dominant needs and interests the rival is the side of you that wants to lose, the side of you that wants to give everything up, the side of you that wants to quit. Um, the rival is the dropout, the rival is um, the person you used to be that you grew out of. Uh, it's the traumas and the past and the negatives. And I think to some extent, when I hear people out there screaming for repression and for racism and for hate, what I hear is a kind of cry for help. Because that's to me what the rival mode is. When you are in this mode and when you start saluting the rival mode as the mode to be, the way to be. The way to be is angry, hateful, and to be toxic. That's who you should be. Then that's a cry for help in my opinion. Because I don't think anyone believes that's good. But they believe so because they believe, well... The only way to succeed in society, the only way to be good in society, is to be a rival. And of course, that is what builds the platform for a rival to take over society. And I really, I believe that rivals are and repressive governments are the norm in the world. And that's the tragedy. The global tragedy is that we live in a world ruled by repression and by authoritative regimes all across the world. Uh, the liberal West is just a small part of the world. And uh, even here we are susceptible to control and to authority and to psychopaths and to people that want to manipulate and break us down and what that speak to our lesser nature. And uh, all we can really do is speak out our inner truth. Going back to Nietzsche, what he said that I really like is don't raise your own way of life as the good one. Don't trick an ESTP that the uh, right way to live is like an INFJ because you'll make them miserable. You'll make them angry. You'll make them sad. You'll make them feel ashamed of who they are. Don't tell an ENFP that the right way to be is like an ISTJ because you will put so much stress, so much anxiety on their shoulders, so much insecurity of who they are. And you will be speaking to, in doing so, the lesser side of their nature. And that can backfire on you. Nietzsche argued that when we speak about what we want to do, our passion, our purpose, we should always be careful to mention that this is my passion, my purpose. It doesn't have to be yours. And in doing so, I think we can teach other people to do the same. To also speak out of their passion and their purpose. And to realize that everyone has their unique purpose. Nietzsche believed that everyone had a uh, nature. Uh, not everyone was the same. Not everyone was born into the same white paper of the same traits and the same needs and the same nature. But everyone is different. We've all inherited our parents and our uh, elders and the people before us and our friends and our families different values and thoughts they're all living inside of us and we are unique and the right way to live the just the good is to live in trueness with your character and with what you want and really i don't worry that in doing so people will be come evil i don't believe that evil is what drives us in our nature. It, does, it isn't that we are born to want to hurt other people or to cause suffering or authoritarianism. We're born to really just speak out of our inner truth, whatever that may be. And uh, the only reason conflicts exist is because we are creating this false conflict between these different truths. And because we are so arrogant to believe that our truth is the only right one. So, what can we do against authoritative regimes? Maybe, that, maybe that's the purpose of my channel, I don't know. Maybe my purpose is to spread enlightenment and authenticity and 
to promote people to be themselves. And maybe in doing so, I am doing something to combat injustice in the world and to promote democracy and uh, freedom of expression and the rights of the individual to be true to themselves and to express what they want and to become the best version of themselves. If so, I'm happy. And if not, if maybe I'm just doing a small part of it, I'm okay with that too. That's all for today, and I hope to watch you guys, to see you guys tomorrow.